Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2021 film, The Found Footage Phenomenon. I like that title, by the way. Uh, gets to the point of it. Uh, this is a Shutter exclusive, and it's coming to Shutter on Thursday, May 19th. So, Census Review is coming out ahead of that. And it's a new film. No spoilers in this. But I'm just going to give you an idea. Will you like it? Will you not like it? And for me, I have to throw out the disclaimer. I'm not a fan of found footage films. I, it's a subgenre of horror I really just don't get into. There are many reasons why that I don't want to go into here. But that said, when I do reviews of things, specific, specifically like found footage or any other subgenre I'm not a big fan of, I set that aside. Now that also said, I like documentaries a lot, especially ones focused on horror. This is a good documentary. If you want to know more about found footage and the applications to society, how society influenced it, um, how things have kind of developed, to hear from some of the people who have made very influential found footage films, this is a good documentary to watch. And if you're into found footage, this particularly is a good documentary to watch. So I enjoyed it for what it was, even though it's not going to drive me to go out and watch found footage films because I just don't get into it. But I have a feeling that many people who watch this will then want to go watch a bunch of found footage films. So this was written and directed by Sarah Appleton, who did The Brains Behind the Nightmare and was also the cinematographer for the amazing documentary Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched, A History of Folk Horror. If you haven't seen that, that is a must documentary. It's very long, but it's wonderful. And also involved in the writing and directing was Philip Escott, who did a ton of short documentaries, some longer documentaries, and films such as Cruel Summer, The Quiet Revolution, uh, State Society, and the Canadian Horror Film, which that sounds interesting, and then has other films coming up called Rehab and Three Days on Planet Earth. So a lot of experience going into this film. Once again, coming Thursday, May 19th. Doesn't really need a synopsis. It's a documentary about found footage films and kind of traces back societally and technologically and film-wise, you know, where they started, maybe where they were influenced, which is some of the more interesting stuff for me. And it kind of chronicles it through time a little bit. Not, not like painstakingly or, you know, getting into super minute details, but in a little bit broader strokes, well, maybe medium strokes, it's kind of talking about the genre, how it's developed and what's influenced it and how it has influenced film and society and things like that. So very interesting. Those are the types of things I really love to hear when you're watching a documentary about horror. It takes a subgenre or multiple subgenres and it just dives in and it gets deep and it kind of autopsies it basically and just kind of gives you a significantly larger knowledge on, you know, how that subgenre operates and where it was, where it is now, how it became that way, all that good stuff. So if you're looking for that, this is the film for you for sure. If you're not, then maybe it's not. Uh, it starts with people defining the genre, which is a good idea for anyone who may be wandering into this documentary, not fully knowing what the found footage is, but I'm assuming that the majority of people who are going to watch it, probably the overwhelming majority of people, know a lot about found footage films, or at least a little bit. Um, they also get to very early on kind of why it ends up connecting with people. And like I said, they kind of go over societal influences on it and then its influences on society. And it's not just like one broad thing. They, they kind of talk about it in different time periods. So that's even better instead of just being like, it connects with society because of this one thing. It's kind of like, well, at this time it connects because of this. And at this time it connects because of this. And then, so... And it also just makes you wonder, like, where is it going next? Where is the genre going next? And where is society going next that will then potentially influence that genre? It just makes you think. It makes me think. There are obviously lots of clips of found footage films thrown into this. It is that typical mixture of watching people being interviewed and then throwing in the clips, going between the things. And a lot of times, obviously, they have people talking over the clips which makes a whole lot of sense. Sometimes they have just the clip and the audio from the clip as well. So it's a really good ratio of just seeing people talk versus the actual clips. So good job on that. They obviously know how to make a good documentary film, I will say. Uh, so there is that. I like that they trace back the origins uh, to things similar to found footage that helped influence, potentially helped influence the genre. That's something I had not personally considered, and I'm not going to you know, obviously tell you 
what those things are because, you know, watch it yourself. But um, there were some kind of aha moments for me personally that this brought up that I was just like, oh, you know, I had never considered that, but that makes a whole lot of sense. The biggest thing for me being what I just said, you know, the potential origins of stuff that influenced found footage. And then also just getting like these little tidbits of things that weren't quite found footage, but were kind of like almost the beginnings of found footage. And then tracing it all the way up to when, when it's like full blown found footage film. So they did a good job of laying that out and structuring it properly. And the pacing for this film is quite good, even though it's like an hour and 40 minute runtime. Um, pacing's good, so I, I'm down with that. Uh, they also talk about the societal influences, which I kind of already said. Unfortunately, one small problem for me, but it probably won't be a problem for most people, the audio and video quality isn't consistent. It kind of changes from interview to interview sometimes. Like sometimes it looks like super professional, really well staged, audio is amazing, and then other times it's like, the video doesn't look as good as what you were just watching and the audio sounds a little bit muffled or garbled or kind of like the acoustics in the room it's being shot aren't really good. But I understand, you know, when you're talking to certain people, you kind of have to take what you can get as far as interviews go. You know, you can't necessarily always go to those people. So I'm forgiving in that sense. It's just something that may, you know, stand out to some people as being a little bit of a bothersome thing about the film. To me, it was a little bit, but not too bad. Um, there are some interesting points about how the genre evolves and why. That's another thing I was kind of already talking about, about kind of the evolution of it and kind of... They don't necessarily... One thing I would have liked in this, and it's not, you know, a deal breaker. It doesn't kill the film or anything like that. But one thing I would have liked at the very end is maybe have some people postulate about where the genre could end up going. I know that's kind of a hard thing because like one of the things that they talk about is how the, the genre really has a lot to do with like changing and evolving and being more popular along with changes in technology because obviously it's very tied into that because of the whole found footage aspect of it. So yeah, but you know, if, if they could have just had someone or even just say like, we don't know, we never know where it's going to go but just a small thing. Some of the bigger names uh, that are interviewed in this, uh, Ruggiero Diodato, which unfortunately my screener version did not have subtitles, so I have no idea what he said. It was all in Italian, unfortunately. Hopefully the version of the documentary that's going to be on Shutter has subtitles because there's another director as well who's speaking in another language that no idea what they're saying, no subtitles. So hopefully the subtitles are there for everyone who's going to watch it. Otherwise, massive fail, massive, massive fail, because you have this interview, you know, you got to get the subtitles in there. And it really does bother me personally when I don't get the subtitles because I'm reviewing it. Like, because if it's not there, like I'm going to say in my review that it's not there and that's not looking good on the filmmakers necessarily. So you know, obviously it didn't kill the film because I still quite enjoyed it, but it's just a little thing that kind of bothers me. It's like, finish it, then put out the screeners. I just don't understand why you would send something out for review that's not finished. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, so Ruggiero Diodato is interviewed Eduardo Sanchez, Oren Pelli, and Andre Overdahl. Uh, and they all have really interesting, cool things to say. Obviously, they're all very influential when it comes to found footage. So it was great that they were able to pull in those names. And then there are other people who have uh, been involved with making found footage films who I wasn't really personally aware of because I'm not big into found footage, but people who are big into found footage may very well know who these people are. So they got a really good range of people to interview who have a lot of interesting things to say and very interesting opinions to throw out there about the genre. So it's well done, it hits a lot, uh, but yeah. Uh, that, I mean, that's basically all I have to say about it. It's a fun documentary. It's really good. And like I said, if you're into found footage big time, I think you're really going to enjoy this film. Uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm giving it a very solid four star rating. I think they did quite good or quite a good job with this one. And I would love to see this team tackle maybe another subgenre. That would be a lot of fun if they could tackle another horror subgenre. Um, you know, if they happen to see this, maybe influencing, I don't know, creature features I think would be a lot of fun. 
I don't think we've gotten any documentaries about that, and creature features are awesome. But anyway, um, put your comments down here. We can talk about this, and go ahead. We can do spoilers in the comments, so just know that. If you don't want spoilers, don't look in the comments, but it's not really going to spoil a whole lot, to be honest. It's a documentary, you know? It's not like a, there's a there's a story narrative that has a big twist ending to it or anything like that. Um, do me a favor, hit subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. It is quick, painless, costs you no money, and literally is the way that you can thank me for putting this free content out there. So I would love that. Also hit the notification bell button because then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, which I'm doing for a week, which I think is a good amount. But regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this video. It does mean a lot to me. And until next time, keep it brutal.